It's the Toronto Comic Con 2024 highlights. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Hello, this is Sean Kelly at the 2024 Toronto Comic Con. As the sister event to Fan Expo Canada, the 2024 Toronto Comic Con took place from March 15th to 17th, 2024 in the North Building of the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. On the first day of the convention, I began by exploring the various booths on the main show floor. I then attended my first panel of the day, which was 70th Anniversary of Godzilla, a celebration in music presented by Robert Daniels, host of Visions in Sound on 98.5 CKWR in Kitchener, Ontario. Uh, for 70 years, Godzilla has been stomping and crushing its way through cinema and video games long before Star Wars, Doctor Who, James Bond, and the MCU. Godzilla first appeared on the scene in 1954. And in a now famous film simply called Godzilla. So now with the nuclear bombings of Hir uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Lucky Dragon fight incidents still fresh in the minds of, of Japanese, uh, by some Godzilla is considered a metaphor for nuclear weapons, while others have suggested that Godzilla is a metaphor for the United States. Uh, a giant beast woken from its slumber that then takes terrible vengeance on Japan. I next checked out the Q&A with Tom Canova, known for his role on CW's The Flash. You don't know that you're not going to get the boot. You don't know that people aren't going to kick you out. And especially if you lack it as long as I have, most of the time they're like, hey, you're not getting renewed. And your heart's broken because you love these people and you're not coming back. And that's why a lot of people say, hey, is it, is it fun being an actor? It's, 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 a, it's incredible. But most of the time we see successes, right? You see your favorite actors on this show, then this show, and you don't realize that in between that, that's been two years. And maybe they've been trying so hard to get a job and nobody will have them. And so when you get a job where it's like Grant and like Carlos and Danielle and people that, and Jesse Martin who lives in New York where I live and I've known forever, you know, you, you really want the thing to go. And so you're really hopeful, but you don't want to put too much hope so that you don't get hurt. hurt. And so season one, Greg Berlanti and the writing staff went to town on season one. They made it Flash versus Reverse Flash. About as simple as you can get, but really when you look at the great storylines, Superman, Lex Luthor, Joker, Batman, Flash, Reverse Flash, when you do that, you boil it down to what is essential and the stakes get really, really high. And so really that season was like talk to a UT writing and acting, everybody really believing and hoping that we would keep going. And they really kept the story fairly simple, but on it, really one of the episodes that we were talking about, you know, Grant unveils that he's the Flash, like Iris finds out that Barry Allen is the Flash, Joe gets, get Joe gets kidnapped, Wells gets out of a wheelchair, you discover who Wells is, Wells kills Cisco. You know, it's, it's a crazy ride, and that's just one episode. And so a lot of that was like us going, okay, we're building up to the finale, it's gonna be Flash versus Reverse Flash, Flash wins, and we can all go home. One of the headlining panels this year was a reunion with the cast of the animated X-Men series, including Canadian actors George Buza and Cal Dodd. Once we started doing X-Men, uh, we never really hung out. Actually, I missed the, the rap party at your house for the show, which you I sure did. It was uh, quite the bash. You sure did. I didn't. But well, I, didn't. I, I was shooting another Jubilee at the time. <laughs> And I couldn't make it. Cyclops was there. Cyclops was there. <laughs> God bless me and rest in peace. But I used to carpool it with uh, Cal and Donna. I dropped my car off at their house and then we'd share a cab up to the airport and go to the Comic Cons. But ever since they tore up the Gardner Expressway, uh, getting across the city is uh, really hard. So now I just make my own way to the airport because driving that Lakeshore Boulevard all the way to the uh, other end of the city is, is nonsense. <laughs> Even getting here, they should have taken 10, 15 minutes and took us almost an hour. <laughs> My final panel for day one was the first Canadian convention appearance of Scottish actor Dennis Lawson, better known as Wedge Antilles from the Star Wars franchise. So Dennis, welcome to Toronto. Have you been here many times before? No, this is the first time I've ever been to Canada. <laughs> And then I saw the corn and I went, perfect, fantastic combination. So 
My wife and I are just delighted to be here, and um, we got in last night, and once the con's finished, we're going to see it a couple of days, obviously, and drive out to guess where? The falls, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And get married. Oh, no, we got married. <laughs> Looking forward to that and to discovering the city a bit more. Yeah, so delighted to be here. Early in the Q&A, Dennis Lawson talks about being born in Glasgow. I was born in Glasgow. Yes, I was born in Glasgow. And, uh, but uh, we left when I was three years old. I couldn't get a decent cappuccino anywhere. So we, we, um, I was brought up in a little Scottish town called Creef in Perthshire. Very beautiful. In a very, very beautiful part of Scotland. Uh, just how we got, my sister and I got very lucky. Uh, when I was born in Glasgow, we were living in what was called the tenements at that time, and they were very, very tough, very, very rough, difficult. Well, I think Glasgow still has a reputation of being kind of a tough. It has a nice street cred to it. I would say now, actually, um, it was like that for many, many years, but over the last, I don't know, maybe five, maybe more than ten years, it's now got quite a different atmosphere. It's quite laid back, it's quite cruel, it's quite young. As a, as a, a city, oh, yeah. and uh, there are parts of it. Edinburgh, of course, uh, as you know, is very, very beautiful, extraordinary. But there are wonderful parts of it. Dennis Lawson's panel featured a surprise appearance by Darth Vader, and he even got to show off his tap dancing skills. Day two of Toronto Comic Con opened with a bit of disappointment because a special advanced screening of X Men '97 ended up being at capacity long before I arrived at the convention center. However, I did later in the day check out Xavier's Lounge for Gifted Youngsters to see some classic X-Men animated episodes while enjoying a wide variety of serials. After the X-Men disappointment in the morning, I checked out to see what was going on on the show floor before going to a panel with Mary McDonough of Battlestar Galactica and Donnie Darko. Toronto, Vancouver, there's always an argument, right? And I have spent more time in Vancouver, to be fair, I knew it better. But the people are very different. Very, you're very different, and I, I love that about it. And it's the same with LA and New York. Like, you really, it's, you can go to New York and then to London, and you feel like you're related. But you go to New York, LA, and you feel like you're in a different country or something. (laughs) Countries. I don't even know what countries mean anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? We're all becoming, um, thank God, connected. I then attended a behind the scenes of VFX panel hosted by VFX supervisors Alexander Wood and Jennifer Mallet. I have been a VFX supervisor on a bunch of different series for the past uh, about. Oh gosh, it's like uh, seven or eight years now doing all the Star Treks that have come to Toronto. Um, Star Trek Discovery, all five seasons, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, the three seasons of that, and then now uh, Section 31, as well as uh, there's another Starfleet that uh, has just been announced coming to Toronto called Starfleet Academy that starts in the summer. And I've only been a VFX supervisor a lot less two years now and but I have 14 years of VFX experience uh, as a compositor so I was an artist before that yeah so Jen Jen has the actual like art side of things and she does all the actual shots and I just get to tell people like her what looks good (laughs) and what doesn't and to work harder and better my big panel for day two was with Star Trek Strange New Worlds cast members Anson Melt, Ethan Peck, and Christina Chong, and a somewhat naive moderator. I'd love to have you been to Toronto before? Is this your first time? <laughs> first time, first day. First time, first day. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. That's a joke we film here. <laughs> oh, snap. You do, don't you? I like that you're prepared. Yeah, that was terrible. So I'm still jet lag because I'm US based. So this one, this is totally new for me. During the Q&A, Anson Mount talks about Captain Pike's love of cooking. Her presentation of Pike and cooking is such a huge (laughs) piece, and that was was you wanting to do that, to kind of bring that character out, yes? Sort of, it came up in a conversation between me and the showrunners, um, and, I don't know, keep it. There's a side of the character I I wanted to make clear, um, but I'm not going to talk about it now, but... 
uh, Akiva thought maybe dinners around the captain's table would be a good idea, and then I felt like, um, well, what if, what if, you know, every every captain gets one request for his his quarters, and I can't bring my horse. <laughs> so, so, what if he's a what if he's in like he's into cooking, and you want him in the kitchen? And so they built it. They built the kitchen. I love that. I began my final day at Toronto Comic Con at the Retro Creek Kid booth, checking out one of the daily photo ops with Mona from the children's series Nanalan. My first panel of the day was with Ahsoka cast members Iman Esfandi and Diana Lee Inosanto, with the latter telling the story of how she came to be in the Star Wars universe. And it started with me getting a phone call from my manager who was really representing me more as a director. And he goes, the producers, or somehow they know about you on Mandalorian. And I go, that's impossible. I, I couldn't even get a theatrical agent at all. And um, they go, well, somehow they know about you and you have like three days to get ready. You must sign an NDA. And so there I was by myself in my home channeling my theater arts roots. and. Um, working out with my, working the lines with my son, who has autism, by the way, so this was great, because we could just go over and over in repetition. And I went in and I auditioned for Sarah Finn's office with her team, and, um, you know, uh, three days later I get this call that I'm going to work on The Mandalorian, and I still didn't understand for what, or what the role would, would really be. And by the way, when you get the sides, it's disguised. You would never know in a million years that it was Star Wars, ever. And so about a month later, about a month later, I believe, I, I get the call to go to the studio and it's John Favreau greeting me in the lounge, giving me a tour of the volume and taking me straight to Dave Filoni. And, and Dave Filoni's like, I bet you're wondering how we found you. And I'm like, yeah, because by this time I'm having an out of body experience. And he said, well, um, and what I found out is John Favreau said, I think we really need to uh, find authentically a real martial artist that could hopefully act, or an actress that really was authentically a, a real martial artist. And so Dave goes, okay, and he, he went on Google. He went on Google and typed woman martial artist and led to my photo from my movie, The Sensei, took him to the trailer, which was, by this time, my movie's over 10 years old, guys. And uh, that's how they found me. I immediately followed up this panel with Harvey Guillen from What We Do in the Shadows. Like, I remember first year we shot really quickly. I remember the first season we shot like, we shot 10 episodes in nine weeks. Wow. So it was like, go, 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 go. And it was like 16 hour days every day. So like, as soon as you put your head in the pillow, it's like, mm, trying to go back to work. And you're like, ah. Um, then we kind of, you know, as time went by, we kind of elongated the shoot schedule. But we always shoot in winter, and we didn't know that when we wrote the scripts in the first season, so we were outside a lot. <laughs> if you remember the first season, we're outside of uh, Beanie Philstein's uh, LARPing group, uh, The Vampires Are Flying. And Can we get a round of applause for that? Yeah. <laughs> That's where. Yeah. We love a LARP group here. We love a LARP group. Uh, live action role play. That's the acronym. Uh, that is, right? That's yeah, right, I think so. Uh, yeah, we were outside and they were on wires, like flying, and even the locals who were on our crew and stuff were like, wow, you guys have guts. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, it's the coldest day in history in Toronto. <laughs> and we're shooting outside and the wind was blowing and they were getting tangled with each other. So they were like, <laughs> and all the vampires were like hitting each other and hitting the brick wall and we couldn't get a good take. And so like, what's going on, Laszlo? I was like, I can't really see the And when they were up there for like three hours, and I was like, is everything okay? And they're like, yeah, we just can't get this. During the afternoon, I made one final walk around the show floor to try and see anything that I might have missed while also avoiding the very packed crowds. My uh, final event of the 2024 Toronto Comic Con was a screening and Q&A for the Amazon Prime Video series, Davy and Jonesy's Locker. Every episode is like a new dimension, a new, a new universe, right? So you have to like figure out how to like do that, but also stay true to our characters. I do not consider myself a comedic actor. And then they put me beside Veronica Slowikowska, <laughs> which was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, 
I'd say I do comedy. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, what, what do I do? I did, I was on What We Do in the Shadows. Woo! Yep, a few years back. Had a, had a couple lines and a couple episodes. Um, and then, yeah, I do like improv and sketch and then now I make videos online. That concludes my highlights of the 2024 Toronto Comic Con. See you in August for Fan Expo Canada.